Hello, my friends. This is Tom McLaughlin, writer, director of Jason Lives, Friday the 13th, part six. Also lead singer of The Sloths. And you are listening to the 80s slasher librarian. <laughs> They thought the nightmare was dead and buried. They were wrong. Jason lives. Happy Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, part six. Jason lives. Rated R. Starts Friday, August 1st at a theater near you. Greetings, Slashaholics! Welcome to another episode of After the Slash, episode question mark. So, um, yeah, Friday the 13th, part 6. Um, it was fantastic. Yeah, we had, we, had Tom, we had Tom McLaughlin on there with us talking about it, the writer-director. And uh, be sure to, you know, if you haven't seen Jason Lives, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but you got to watch the movie. <laughs> Uh, check out the audiobook. Um, check out the slots. Uh, we're also joined by Slasher Pepper here. Awesome. Uh, currently, uh, we're battling it out to uh, Dr. Pepper drinking games for the Leprechaun series. I'll, oh, I can't say yet. I can't say uh, what our score is because he hasn't dropped the latest one. Um, you know, so, watching your videos made me realize how much I really don't remember about those movies. I mean, I must have seen every Leprechaun movie when I first started going to Blockbuster, and I haven't seen them since. <laughs> but uh, Slasher, Slasher Pepper did an interview with Tom McLaughlin not too long ago. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, still on the channel somewhere, so uh, if you're interested, you can check it out on, uh, on Slasher Pepper. So, uh, Tom, you were talking about Vengeance and the other fan films and stuff. Uh, i got to make a confession I didn't catch that it was you at the beginning the first time I watched Vengeance uh, as the good. caretaker. It was something I was like, wait a second, I know who that was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was a really that was really cool that they brought you in for that. And so so they've contacted you. You're definitely doing the sequel, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I've so been doing nice. little parts and things. Uh, there was a. Uh, a, a film that one of the uh, students from uh, Dodge College, where I teach filmmaking uh, in Orange County, uh, he made his first feature film called Rock Steady Row. And uh, he, you know, gave me a part in it as this very strange janitor who picks up bodies on campus that have been murdered and sticks them down into the trash. And I also narrate through the movie, you know, what's going on. And then, you know, I kind of wrap it up at the end. And that also was great fun, you know, and it, it won at, um, uh, what was it, Smash, um, what's, what's, what's the, the film festival uh, in, in, I think it's in uh, Colorado, it's not Smash Fest. Oh, man. Smash, uh, smash something. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, slam. Uh, uh, slam something. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm tired, so my brain is not operating. <laughs> But yeah, won audience prize and best film there, so that really gave it a you know boost in the independent market. But yeah, this it's been it's been great coming in and doing you know little parts and things. Usually something weird, appropriate for me. We uh, we do these little segments. Uh, we usually do them later in the show, but I know that you can't stay that long. Um, do you happen to have an unpopular horror opinion? That uh, an opinion you have of anything horror related that isn't generally a popular opinion do i let's see let me see if i understand what you're saying that okay something is horror related that's not like what everybody would always re reacts to that's a horror thing yeah well like like for instance my favorite uh one of my favorite jason flicks uh my top three go uh jason lives jason x jason goes to hell people don't like jason goes to hell generally people don't like jason x generally I do. So that's like an unpopular one. You know, just something like that. I see. Okay. And I can't use Trump, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let me see. <laughs> what uh, God. That is horrific, though. So I think some of the ones like, uh, you know, going back to the 
kind of going back into the 60s, guys, uh, if any of you have seen any of the Roger Corman, uh, Edgar Allan Poe series and stuff, and used, they used, you know, Vincent Price pretty exclusively. But then there were some that had Peter Lorre and Basil Rathbone and, and Boris Karloff. And there was one called uh, Comedy of Terrors that, you know, not a particularly good film, <laughs> but they were all in it and they were doing things you know, and to have banter back and forth. And as a, you know, horror fan, I just love that. But whenever I bring it up, it's sort of like, you like that thing? And I go, yeah, I was a kid. And it was, you know, those were my heroes. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's um, one one person was online. They were saying that Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation with Matthew McConaughey, was their favorite Texas Chainsaw. And everyone jumped on them. And they said, hey, this is my first horror movie. I mean, you usually love your first horror movie. So, I mean, there has to be a first favorite horror movie for everyone. Everyone has the first one they ever saw, and that's always going to imprint on them. So, yeah, I mean, I, I completely get that. I know somebody that loves the Star Wars Christmas special, and not in an, <laughs> not in an ironic way. They love the Christmas special. So, that's great. Yeah, so it, it's... Go, yeah. <laughs> it's there sometimes. Um, my, my, my girlfriend, Laura, is like an 80s horror expert and i mean and she loves some of these things that i'm going are you kidding you know and we'll go to sleep watching them you know it's, thank god for shutter there's so much stuff you know you can watch and catch up on that you missed over the years but you know there's things in there that she just thinks are just like her favorites but she saw them like when she was eight years old so they really have like a like you know comfort food you know yeah. to her you right know, the best part of her escape as a child was you know into those horror movies from that from the 80s the moment you said power. that, I'm thinking of Chud. Have any of y'all seen that? Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. I like Chud. I don't <laughs> that, that's the I first like movie it. I thought of. Uh, <laughs> what does it stand for again? Like, um, underground cannibal cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Y'all ever yeah, seen I'm the movie the Throats? Kind of, uh, uh, Frank and Hooker. I love that one. Frank and Hooker? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean likes uh, the bong. The What is it? Evil Bong. The oh, evil bong. right. The Ginger Dead Man, yeah. I've never seen the movie, but I remember renting horror movies back in the late 80s, early 90s, and there was this preview for a movie called Stuff Stephanie and the Incinerator. <laughs> I've never seen it, but I love it. You know, just the title itself. I gotta, just, I gotta check that out. Just sells it for me. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Slasher Pepper, do you have an unpopular horror opinion? Oh, yeah, I... um. I always hated the first It movie from 2017, yeah. and um, I, I really didn't like it. I mean, for example, I, I don't really, it's been a long time though, so I'm, I'm willing to rewatch it and give it another chance. Um, what about 1990? I haven't seen that one. Oh, uh, man. I messed up on that movie. When I rented it, it was a DVD. I rented the wrong side of it, I guess, so I saw the second half first, and everyone's like, <laughs> The clown in the sewer grabbing the boy, and I'm like, he's a spider. I, I don't know where any people <laughs> saw that. And then years right. later, I saw the first part, and I'm like, oh. For some I'm reason, Tim an Curry. Hour and, a half, and it was just Tim a dark shadow the clown. Tim Curry's creepier to me. Uh, I, I absolutely agree. I think the 90s movie was just infinitely better. Oh, and I, and I also, I know Tom is going to get pissed at, uh, at me for this one. Uh -oh. uh, but I, I saw The Exorcist like three years ago, oh, uh, no. and I wasn't I wasn't into horror then, but I didn't like it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, again, I have to tell you guys, you know, in, in the day, you know, when that thing premiered, oh you've yeah, seen you know a crowd throw up and run up the aisles and have <laughs> ambulance out there and people passing out, got men passing out. Uh, in the theater, and all of us at the end of the movie just kind of s standing there, meaning to get up and leave, but just staring at the at the, the screen. I mean, it really was devastating. It was amazing. We never saw anything like that. Now it's, you know, there's been so many imitations and variations of those ideas and stuff. You know, it just doesn't have that same, you right. know, shock, you know, the, the, the whole thing with the crucifix. I mean, you know, yeah. being raised Catholic, I was like, Oh my God! I can't believe I've seen something like that. So it's it's uh, yeah. That was that was the one that really kind of defined it for me. Is uh, how do you ever top that? And I did get a job to do the prequel, 
um, and was on it prepping for like two years. And everybody said, that's going to be the end of your career, dude. I don't know why you're doing it. And I said, I think I can make a really cool 1940s movie with, you know, Father Marin when he first had a confrontation with the demon. And we tried for like, you know, two years to try to get the script right. And when the script finally came in, I went, it's like, you know, my dinner with Satan. It just, it did, there was so much talk and, you know, so I, I pulled out of the, out of the uh, project. And then, you know, uh, it was a series of, of trips after that. Paul Schrader, you know, did it. He got fired when he turned in his director's cut. He did nothing wrong. He just shot the script. And Rennie yeah. Harlan came in and said, fuck it, we're going to shoot all over again. And so now they had two movies at, you know, $40 million each. So it was, you know, and then it just, you know, didn't work. I got to see Exorcist in as a re-release back in like 2004 or maybe earlier than that. It was re-released in theaters. And that's the first time I saw the spider walk down the yeah. stairs that's like a deleted scene. And I had nightmares about that. You know, mm -hmm. and I was I was a teenager, you know, going on 18, and that scene <laughs> just messed with me. Uh, so I can see how um, somebody who's desensitized to a lot of horror stuff, watching it for the first time, uh, or even somebody who's used to how movies are now could be bored with most of the beginning of the movie. Yeah. But really, seeing it back then, it was terrifying. And I saw it years after it was new. Uh, but I can, I, can just, I can just see people in the theaters, like you said, just freaking out at this, because there was nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, that really set a lot of standards. Um, but yeah, man, uh, thank you so much for your time. I know that you said you had to... Yeah, I've got, uh, unfortunately, uh, i got a thing that I got supposed to be at at 6.15 on L.A. time here. Yeah, so, I saw uh, the, I saw the clock I to get to meet you. Thank you. All right. My pleasure. It's, it's been great. And uh, any chance to get out of the house and put a mask on and, you know, I take it these days because I go crazy in here just writing. I'm still writing horror scripts, you know, and, uh, you know, trying to trying to not be overwhelmed by the friggin, you know, quarantine. But, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a struggle. That's There's why no I hope it's not to write now. Hmm. Um, All right, guys, please yeah, take care. Thank you and, so uh, much. Thank you for right. having me. I really appreciate it. We had, a, we had a blast. Thank you. All right. Take care. That was awesome. Yeah. Oh, yep. Slasher Pepper, nice to meet you. Um, yeah, watched sure. a lot of your videos. Yeah, it's awesome. I've seen some of the podcasts, too, so I'm uh, familiar with, uh, with you as well. Yeah, it, t it takes a while to really get that confidence. I mean, I remember when we first started this podcast, I was all like, Hi, everyone, you know. Welcome to the podcast. Now I got the white shirts like, hey, we're back. You know, it's just that, that confidence that really you just you need to do this a lot of times before you really get that. Yeah, I um, I don't even remember that because I started like doing this stuff in 2015. At first it was like a a Marvel YouTube channel. It's all very cringy and not very good, you know. Peter um, Parker, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but even before that, you know. So and and so when I see people not starting YouTube because um, they're not confident in front of a camera, not comfortable in front of a camera, I'm just like surprised because I can't imagine that. But you know, it takes it takes some time. Yeah, you want, hear, you want to hear some awkwardness? Go back and listen to Church of the Divine Psychopath and Suffer the Children. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he walked down the corridor with. Uh, yeah, it was so right? bad. <laughs> it's actually funny. There is something we talked about in the in in the the earlier part of tonight that actually links into what my unpopular horror opinion slash what the fuck horror. Okay. okay, hear me out. I was walking around today and I was thinking, I think Hell Lake would have been a little bit better if it was Michael Myers instead of Jason. And I'll tell you why. Because Jason, to me, Jason is in the camp. He, he's kind of primal, like a hunter. Um, he's getting revenge on people that killed him. But Michael Myers has this composure. He has this quiet, almost sort of grace when he walks. And he's been known to put on disguises. Um, I think he put on a cop uniform in one of them. He put someone else in his. And he's smart because he's not undead. He's not a child. He's just... He doesn't have a mental, 
of evil. And I can see there's a fan film. It's called Blast. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's that's a, a weird night- name for a Friday the Thirteenth. It's it's Blast. I don't know the name of it. No, why, I'm just, why would they name it that? Hey. Um, <laughs> it's on Blinky 500. They tried to do a sequel to Freddy vs. Jason where they put all the horror icons duking it out. I've seen that, yeah. But yeah. I think I talked in an earlier podcast where Freddy tries to get Michael to help him, and when he visits Michael Myers in hell, Michael is in a sanitarium, and he's in the dark sitting in a chair, and there's a jack-o'-lantern on the table, and Freddy's going around and like, hey, buddy, you want to give me a hand? And Michael's just looking in the eyes of the pumpkin, not answering him, and he just goes... Are you going to answer me or that fu- fucking pumpkin? And he knocks it off the table, and Michael gets up to throttle him. And I'm like, I can see uh, the main character of Hell Lake going to Michael in the institution. Like, Michael, Halloween's coming up. Maybe we can go and give them the anniversary you've always wanted to. Like, Michael, rise up, and just like him and Michael Myers rising up out of hell. And to me, I just I feel like that could have been a better Hell Lake. That's just what I was thinking today. Yeah. Halloween Lake. Halloween River. Okay, okay, well, it wouldn't be called Hell Lake. It would be more um, Halloween. <laughs> uh, I think Halloween Ocean. To do that times. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween was when they tried to do Hellraiser and Michael Myers. Or team Jesus up with the main character and call it Heaven Lake. I don't know. They actually did a. Re- there was a fan fan trailer years ago where they combined Hellraiser and. Halloween, and it was actually a really cool mashup. I think they took a lot of scenes of Michael getting tangled in the electrical wires of Resurrection, but the way they cut it made it look like chains and hooks were like grabbing into his flesh, and oh, it was a cool. really, really good cut scene. Did you watch the new intro yet that I shared on Patreon? Uh, I haven't yet. I have been baking in the sun today. <laughs> I, get, I, get, I, get, I get cinnabited with the hooks and stuff at the end of it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to watch that after this is done. Um, Anyways, yeah, man, Slasher Pepper, I had no idea that Tom had to leave early. I really did not, so please don't hold that against me. That's all right, uh, dude. He didn't tell us. He didn't know that the – he thought the after show was just like a few minutes. He didn't know it was like a full podcast, so that's my bad. Um, well, I'm just glad to, um, to be here now. So uh, Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. It's We're going to do – retro- so. What's that? Sorry? What did you say? That it's uh, three fifteen here now. Am. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. I woke up like fifty minutes ago. I had a nap of like three hours. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's why know. I'm usually not on air because I wish I would be on air uh, more often because uh, it is a lot of fun to show you guys have and uh, you know. But hey, now I'm here, so uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I usually yeah, we- get up at three. I usually get up at 3 a.m. for work, so staying up past 10 is just a chore for me. <laughs> right. I got to get up at 6 a.m. every day, sometimes 5.30. And some nights I'll be editing a narration till midnight or 1. Are mm-hmm. we having a contest here, LaRue? Who is more yep. tired? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at my eyes. I think eyes, Pepper wins that one. Uh, you, He's you, a lot, you you're a lot more energetic than I, I am right now. I, I'm beat. <laughs> Last time I saw uh, Roger really zone out was on Miss Fontaine. <laughs> 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 you haven't seen the Left in the Hood drinking game yet, have you? Yeah, oh, I've, I've, I've watched all the ones up to. Um, I haven't. I haven't seen Leprechaun Back to the Hood. That, that's the okay. one I'm up to. But you know the Miss Fontaine joke, though, right? Uh, where, he's, where, he's, where he's like zoning out into it. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, damn, dude, you're sitting there like, damn, I'm, I want some of that. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it, like, on Sunday, that's, like, always the worst time to record, especially because I, uh, especially that uh, night before, I stayed out till, like, 5 a.m. I got home at, like, 5 a.m., and then I wake up at 1, like, a little bit of sleep, a little hungover, you know, and then uh, within six, seven hours, we record these drinky games. I try to be really active, you know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I really feel like I'm being active. <laughs> and then you say, you're not talking too much this time. And I'm like, fuck, I'm really trying on my hardest now. <laughs> oh, God, dude, we we just did the, the one he's going to be putting on his channel pretty soon is Leprechaun Origins. 
Yeah. That was such a horrible movie, and I, I warned him. I warned him forever, and I was like, you know what? I never finished the movie. I'm going to give it an honest, honest chance, you know? And it was so bad. <laughs> okay, you know how, for instance, POV shots in horror movies, right? The yeah. The purpose of the POV is you don't, it's to keep the, the, the monster secret, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but once you reveal the monster, there's no need for the POV shot anymore, correct? Right? Yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> they do this POV, then they reveal the monster, and then they'll like cut to a POV, then cut back to the monster. Um, one of my drinking rules was bad POV shots, and yeah, uh, I could have probably just done just that role. Well, it got me say, about the leprechaun. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I will say this, though. I was actually thinking about this off the uh, leprechaun origins. The leprechaun in origins would easily kill Warwick Davis Leprechaun. I don't like to say this, but the one in Origins are is a lot stronger and faster, you know, than um, Warwick Davis. I definitely prefer Warwick Davis as Leprechaun, wait, but he's wait, a dumb wait. man. Like, Warwick Davis could just do that thing where he, like, does that with his hand and, like, it blows their stomach out or their chest out or whatever. Like he did to, to it Ice It would be Cube, an interesting fight to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whether, whether leprechaun like, versus leprechaun. <laughs> I, I, I got like it. leprechaun versus awesome leprechaun. <laughs> yeah. When I when I first saw the leprechaun from Origins, okay, you remember South Park? The shit goblin, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> shit, okay. There, leprechaun there, versus shit goblin. <laughs> there was an episode of South Park where you, you remember Chef? Yeah. Yeah. He. You, you remember? You remember the scientist who has that? little weird clone of himself that doesn't really speak and it just kind of hangs around him. Yes, there, early, when, yeah. when Chef first saw that, he just goes, what, what is that thing? I mean, it doesn't <laughs> even look like anything. That it doesn't even get an when answer either. When I saw the Leprechaun from Leprechaun Origins, like, what is that? It doesn't even look like anything. <laughs> it doesn't even get like an answer either. You know, it's just yeah. uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are geniuses, man. I think they were making fun of Island of Moreau versus Pleasure Island or something, but, like, it just... Yeah, they didn't really explain that. <laughs> it just has the same Hawaiian shirt that he has, the the, the doctor. Uh, I've got this uh, screenshot that I took in, like, 2014, yeah. and I had Cox Cable at the time, and their subtitles were so fucked. Um, and I was watching South Park, and it was the episode where Stan starts hearing nothing but fart noises when he listens to music. You know? Yeah, cause he's getting he's getting old. Yeah, Never okay. all the music sounds like shit. <laughs> As he wakes up, the subtitles on Cox Cable says "shitting and farting noises." <laughs> that was that was the subtitle. So I took a picture of that and I, I I share it like once a year so I don't lose it and you know. But it was yeah. like that was the subtitle. Somebody that that that's what was generated for for the hearing impaired shitting and farting noises. Um, <laughs> And what if somebody's never been able to hear it all, you know? It's like, okay, that doesn't right. help me. <laughs> what are those? Do you, do I think one of my that. favorite subtitles I saw is, it, it was a comedy music video of a woman making fun of something from Rick and Morty, but the caption was, dances sarcastically. And I love it because she <laughs> does. Like, she absolutely does. But I've never heard somebody dance sarcastically, but she pulls it off just that is that is sarcastic dancing. Sarcastic dancing. Or she's like pretending to have fun, but you can tell she's clearly not. And just sarcastic dancing. That, that goes right Let's there. Be with mistaken happening. with sardonic dancing. Um, yeah. Two totally different things there. Um, what about you? You ever seen any interesting subtitles over there? Um, no, not really any I remember. But I do. Um, I do know that like YouTube often messes up, and sometimes <laughs> certain videos. People will mention it in the comments, and then and then like write the sentence it says, and then what it's actually what it actually is, which sometimes causes for some pretty funny, funny subtitles. But I really can't come up with one now, actually. I never have one where it's uh, where it's like, oh, that's my favorite uh, weird subtitle. Uh, I I have got my what the fuck horror ready uh, for tonight, and that my what the fuck horror is Scream Five. I didn't like that one, like, at all. No, it's the new one coming out, Scream 5. Oh, I think I'm thinking Scream 4. I didn't like that one either. No, Scream 4 was pointless unless they made her the killer or killed her. 
and part five's pointless unless she is not part of it. You know, it's like how many one time is crazy. Two times is like, wow, that's scary as shit. Three times is ridiculous. Four times is pointless. Five times is really milking the shit out of it. Uh, what's the point? Yeah, five, five is the equivalent because you like Robert England who played Freddy Krueger. He was scary, but then it got to the point where he was doing anything. I, I think I sent you the clip of the Japanese show he was on. Yeah. He was like dancing around doing something. It was just, like milking it for every cent it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's still funny though, but that's what Screen Five reminds me it's of. Like, it's like it's like it's like like a good neighbor. State Farm yeah. is there. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my God. Um, do you have a what the fuck horror? My point is, is Screen Five. It just seems like they're doing it just as a cash grab. If they wanted to make it good, I would say throw something out of left field. Make one of the main three the killer, or when the movie starts, like every Scream movie has a cold open, you know, where somebody dies before the title, make it one of the main three die in the beginning. you got to do something to shake this movie up or it is pointless. I mean, other than just to get money from nostalgia. But, yeah, that's my what-the-fuck horror uh, and kind of an unpopular opinion right now. Uh, do you have a what-the-fuck horror, Slasher? So what is a what-the-fuck horror exactly again? Just a uh, what the fuck, like a what the fuck situation in okay. the horror genre. Okay, so anything. Anything. doesn't have to be new. It can be old, new, whatever, something coming out later. Okay, I will, I will think of it while Sean can give his uh, what the fuck horror. I can just see him be like, what the fuck horror? You got a guy that has to read slasher books to you? What? Did you forget how to read yourself? <laughs> No, um, while you're thinking of that, I could bring this up. I just watched a horror movie. I I'm trying to get the popular ones from the 70s and 80s, and I, ju I just watched this one. It was called Alice, Sweet Alice. Oh, Evan, cool. you've seen that. I have not I seen it, but I want to. It was weird. Apparently, the movie Seven took a couple notes out of the book from Alice, Sweet Alice, because it, it, it centers on... This girl, she's about to do her first communion at a church, and her sister dies violently, and everyone thinks it's her because she's really weird. She, you know, she acts weird. She, she has her a secretive hiding place, and the killer wears a raincoat like she does with a mask that's one of those translucent masks where when you put it on, it makes your face look like the face that's on it. And the I whole like how what Jason was supposed to be in part three, according to the other book. Right. I think so, yeah, and you're trying to figure out, is it her, is it not her, because the pacing is off. The pacing makes it seem like, you know, they might do a twist, or the twist might be that she actually did it, you don't know. Um, and it was just, it was a, it wasn't bad, it was just, I didn't really know what to think of it, I just, what do you, th what do you think, LaRue, you've seen it. Uh, I saw it, like, on Encore or something when I was pretty young. Um, and you started describing it, and I'm like, okay, maybe I didn't see that particular movie, but I, I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, the mask thing uh, made me remember. I'll have to rewatch it, but uh, I was young. Uh, it's, it's free on Amazon Prime if you have that. Um, oh, yeah, I've got Amazon. It's free on there. Um, yeah. I was gonna I was gonna share with you, Sean. The other day I was uh, stalking through Slasher Pepper's channel. And uh, what's what do you what's the word for that when you when you're going through somebody's channel? Cyber stalking? No, there's uh, perusing. Yeah, it's like another word for perusing, but I can't think of it. Uh, Sifting. No, and it's like a creepy word or something. Anyways, stalking. Uh, stalking. I was stalking Slasher Pepper's channel. Uh, that's not the word, but anyways, and I was watching <laughs> old videos that he did, like book reviews and stuff, and I found the comment where we met each other. And yeah, right. Talking. And uh, it's so funny because <laughs> all I do is say, hey, man, it's so cool that you review these books because I narrate them. You know, I just started doing it. And uh, he's like, oh, that's cool or something. Then one of his subscribers responds to that and goes, Slasher Pepper, don't listen to this guy. He's just jealous because your narrations are better than his. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even narrating a book. He doesn't even narrate books, man. And this guy's so <laughs> your ass down. <laughs> well, I think we have a narrow list of who that comment could have been. Huh? 
you know, the people that are, like, that's the same four people that try to dislike every video you have. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a narrow list. I, I don't know if it's if it was them. Um, this is back when I first started. I had, like, one troll then that kept uh, uh, leaving comments saying, why do you have a channel on YouTube where you're reading books to people? This is the stupidest channel idea I ever heard of. People can read their own books. And uh, it's like... You're totally missing what I'm doing here. You know, it's I'm. These are books they can't read because they can't get them or they can't afford them. I think you uh, pretty much explain that in every video. If they actually right. watch the videos, they know that. But you come out with these videos, and there's a dislike the minute you man. post it. It's like you did not listen to 55 minutes of this. Come on, man. <laughs> give them. Uh, give YouTube. Them a YouTube is thinking about making it where you have to watch half a video before you can do a thumbs down. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something they're thinking about doing. Because uh, to, to stop this, I don't understand why we have the thumbs up and thumbs down, anyways. Um, I think it's fun sometimes, though. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't have trolls, you know. So, but when, when I do make controversial videos, and I see like, I mean, thirty thumbs up and then five thumbs down, I know like there's still toxic people out there that can't handle my opinion, and I, I kind of like, love that feeling, you know. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like I'm. I'm 17. Those people disliking are probably like 30. And they've accomplished nothing more than I have in their lives. They're disliking a video of a 17-year-old because they don't agree. Before we started recording the podcast, I told Tom and he agreed. I was like, Roger is such is such a cool kid. And sorry, dude, it's the age difference. I call. I'm not. I know you're not a kid. But no, no, I know. Saying, That's fine. I'm like saying it's so cool that he respects. <laughs> <laughs> that he's. He's such a cool little whippersnapper, but he keeps coming <laughs> on my lawn. Uh, no, I was saying that it's cool that you respect the classics, you know, and it gives me hope for the future <laughs> that there's people out there like you uh, that don't just totally dismiss uh, right. stuff back then. Intr Intruder being one of your favorites is pretty cool. Uh, it's um, my all-time favorite. Yeah. Dude, I went back and watched, because I still have the videos for the Freddy's Revenge uh, drinking game. And it wouldn't have made a very good drinking game. Like for oh, most right. of, it. we're just sitting there just watching the movie for most of it. It's uh, it, it's pretty bad. I still think that you. That's why we never did it. But uh, no, it's. I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you, dude. It was pretty bad. It I wouldn't. Seriously, wasn't. <laughs> well, if it wasn't, it should have been because uh, okay. I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, um, everything happens for a reason. I guess uh, that happened for a reason as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing left returns. Well, I mean, we recorded that at the most inconvenient time as well, because I was just going to Bonaire, and I was on vacation in Bonaire, and I still yeah. had that to edit, and I only had, like, the laptop I'm recording on now, um, or calling on now, and I didn't have the file on that computer, I remember, so I couldn't edit it there. Then at home, I didn't have that file, you know, so it all got kind of mixed up. And I also, in Bonaire, I did the drinking game with David for Return of the Living Dead. So that just all mixed up together, and the situation was messed. But now, at least, we have the entire Leprechaun series. Um, well, if you ever want to see it, just for the fun of it, I've got all but the last, like, ten minutes where we reveal the scores. Because uh, we have okay, to stop. Yeah, I, I would like to see that. But because... I've, got, I've got the rest of it. Um, Sean, sorry, man. You were, saying, you were starting to say something? Oh, no, I was just going to say there was something I meant to bring up in the podcast we did, but I didn't find a natural point. And I was about to say that it's interesting that Alice Cooper did Man Behind the Mask for Jason Part 6 because, you know, uh, similarly, was that even a word? Um, and A Nightmare on Street Part 3, Dawkins had Dream Warrior. So I think it's cool that there are iconic rockers that did songs for both of these, and it made me think of what – what musicians could have done music for the other slashers, and it made well, me think. Um, someone Garth Brooks, did, Halloween. What? Motorhead and Motorhead. Garth Brooks, Osborne. Halloween. It's so funny you say Garth Brooks because... I got friends that kill people. Oh, go ahead, what? It actually is the video. <laughs> um, someone did a Garth Brooks parody, uh, Friends in Low Places, but they did Leatherface, Friends with No Faces. And oh, somebody tried to link me to that. I've never seen it yet, it's though. It's so know. funny because, first of all, he's a good singer. Second of all, they actually got footage of him in a bar singing with people. He was like, 
I got friends and I wear their faces. And he's like, he's like riding a mechanical <laughs> bull and he's like singing with like a bolo tie on a stage. And he's like dancing with a chainsaw and they do all the faces, the, the old woman face, the pretty face, the leather face. And he sings and he goes like into a bar. It's, it is just, it's hysterical, but it's so catchy. That's the best part. We had the Fat Boys for, and that's the real name of the group, people. I'm not being mean. Uh, that uh, they did a song for the Dream Master, uh, the yeah. Freddy song, and Will Smith unofficially, unofficially did a song for uh, Freddy's Revenge. Uh, so unofficial. Is that a nightmare that, on the street? Yeah, so unofficial yeah. they would not allow him to make a video with Freddy in it. So the video is like if Frankenstein were Freddy. It's so yeah, because uh, Robert Englund so didn't do the weird. voice for that. I don't think. No, no. Yeah, but. But Hellraiser, um, Pinhead as Motorhead and Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. That that was the the third Hellraiser was what I like to call the Americanized version. There was like explosions, there was cussing, there was heavy metal. I mean, it was they Americanized the hell out of that movie. Is that the one with the CD Cinebite? Yeah, and then the guy had the the the, the TV video camera remember, like as an eye and stuff. That was. ridiculous. Ridiculous, but it was a fun. I still run. love it. Like, I still love it. They just threw like ten million dollars in the movie and just had action, action, action. Man, I still I, I, as much as I love Mr. Bradley, I love the newest Hellraiser movie. Sorry, Judgment. Yeah, I loved it. I can't praise that movie enough. I must watch it twice a year. It's good. It's really good. Uh, it's there's like no budget, but uh, I like the new I like the new Cenobite. I still haven't seen any of the Hellraiser movies. I just know that like three has Hellraiser by Ozzy Osbourne and Motorhead, and then also uh, Hell on Earth. They also have Hell on Earth uh, song by Motorhead, but that's only like in the credits, I think, and was never originally released. There you have it, guys. The next set of drinking games between me and Slasher Pepper are all 11 of the hell. I'm just kidding. I do have a fun fact about that. Um, yeah, that would kill me. Gary you have J. to do it like in, in like sets of three over three years or something. Right. Um, Gary J. Tuncliffe, he actually, you know, he, he, he made his way to the Hellraiser franchise because he was a really big fan. Um, he did the makeup for Hellraiser 3 through 10 wow. and he, he he directs part 10 he stars as the main um demon in the movie um the the auditor and uh he That's wrote it he cool. did everything in the movie if you have a chance larue listen to the commentary for hellraiser judgment he explains every scene in the movie why he chose set designs why he chose cinematography why he chose to do different lighting. I mean, because he, he did the makeup, too. I mean, he pretty much, 10 is his baby. And it's funny because he'll be like, oh, you know, I did the glasses for the auditor, and I made him look cool. But the funny thing is, I didn't realize I couldn't see out of them. Or when they're doing a shot of the house, he goes, yeah, I didn't have any money, so I was running around with a fog machine. So I had to, like, run with the fog machine and then jump back in the director's chair. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really funny to hear his stuff because there's one point, there's one point when the chattering guy doesn't chatter, and he goes... No, I will not take responsibility for that. That was somebody's job. They didn't do it. No, I take responsibility for some mistakes in this movie. No, that is not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like, it's the like only time in the audio where he's just like a little pissed. <laughs> well, I was wanting to unveil my intro during After the Slash, the number three one, yeah. the first draft of it. So uh, we're going to put a cut in. But would you get if I sent you guys the link? Would y'all watch it for a real time uh, reaction? Yep. Okay, give yeah. me just a second. Uh, right link. now. Three, two, one, play. Blue vortex. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's the head. Do you remember the Easter eggs? Uh, yeah. Those basic, uh, All right. In that's hell basically. I always like that labyrinth. That's really like a great shot for what hell could possibly be. We've got the original Leatherface. 
but that's cool. On the cliff. Ooh. Oh. It's <laughs> hanging in there. Oh, that's cool. It's kind of like crazy stairs. I got the box. Kind of reminds me of South Park. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> All right, got to give my courtesy thumbs up. So, uh, yeah, in the finished version, we're going to reveal Ash completely instead of just teasing him. Right. Um, so it's going to go ahead and go all the way up, because some people are, won't get it, even though it should be pretty obvious. But uh, yeah, That's really got... cool stop animation, man. The fact that it's personalized to your channel, it makes it like... Like, like I was saying earlier about how it would be great if we had like, like musicians that could do a theme song or something yeah. or people that could do artwork for the title cards for each of these because, you know, I'm just trying to use Photoshop and I'm, I'm really basic at it. You're the one who does all the touch-ups to make it look a lot cleaner. Yeah. Uh, Roger's the thumbnail guy. He's really good at that. Oh, yeah. Um, that music, though, is just for the draft. Like, it's going to have the uh, Leonard Cohen song. Uh, oh, right. The you want darker. darker. Yeah, that was just just basic, so it wasn't with no sound. Um, See, I, I got it wrong. I, you know, when I, when I first started listening to your channel, I could have sworn somebody, like, made a poem and sent it to you and you narrated it or something. Like, I didn't realize it was an actual song by an artist. I, I was like, oh, song. cool, you know, someone wrote you a poem called We Kill the Flame. Uh, <laughs> not right at all. You should listen to a lot of... Uh, Leonard Cohen has uh, so many amazing songs, man. Yeah, he he's such great. A, he had a great voice. Um, no one expects. Like, it really reminds me of Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. We're very similar vibe, in my opinion. Um, Everyone's uh, like, you listen to Leonard Cohen because everyone's used to me talking about Motorhead or Metallica, Slipknot, you know, stuff like that, heavy metal, you know, Exodus. But then I mentioned that I also love Leonard Cohen, and then they're so surprised. But I love all sorts of music. Okay, I'll, I'll, this will throw you for a loop. I'm going to name off a few of my favorite musicians. You ready? This is... Okay. Meatloaf, Hank Williams Sr., ACDC, ICP, Nickelback. <laughs> I mean, no connection. What's, I'm all over the place. If it's good music and it connects with me in some way, I enjoy it. I'm not tied down to a certain genre. I do you love metal, though. Every time you say Motorhead, I think of... Have, have, have any of you seen the movie Airheads? Yes, yes. I have not. Uh, it, it's basically about these three rockers who are trying to get on the radio, and they accidentally take a uh, radio station hostage or something, but they end up doing um, a concert there, and they bring in everyone from all the city because they make it into this giant party, and it's revealed that the, ma the lead singer of the rock band used to be a nerd in high school, and he's, like, embarrassed of it. And everyone's trying to cheer him on, like, hey, man, I used to be this. Lemmy from Motorhead, the lead singer, was like, I was the editor of the school magazine. <laughs> he just, like, raises his hand in the crowd, and just that made me laugh. Uh, that was Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, and... Uh... It, it was Steve Buscemi, uh, Brendan Fraser, um, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, just, like, a really, really good cast. Oh, it's yeah, just funny, because... Ask. They don't. They don't want to be taking these people hostage. It was all a big misunderstanding. But they know if they go outside, they'll get arrested. So they kind of have to keep them hostage. But they don't want anything. Did so, you like the Scooby Doo thing there, by the way? Oh, uh, with, with the characters running yeah, everywhere. Yeah, they're yeah. going down once. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was afraid people wouldn't like that, but I was like, if, if we're like going to see the, uh, the stairs that defy gravity, I was like, let's. Have everybody go in different directions or whatever. I also uh, love the uh, shot with like the, I think it was like Hellraiser and Letterface and Chucky just running together. <laughs> you know, oh, that's Ghostface funny. and them, yeah. And I love uh, the way you run because you don't run straight; you run like sideways. Just, yeah, like <laughs> sideways. Yeah. Uh, the 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 fourth one that's coming that he's going to make for me in the fall is going to be the conclusion, and uh, the whole thing started is I pulled is an it? economic, huh? Is it? What? Is it going to be the conclusion? They said that with Friday the 13th Part 4. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It's going to be the conclusion of this story. But like, yeah, it all, exactly. It, there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> it all started with me pulling the Necronomicon off the shelf in my library and reading from it. Uh, and, and they started coming out. 
So I'm going to actually have an audio clip in the fourth one where I pull the whole Ash <coughs> thing. And, uh, Hatu, Barata, no. No. <laughs> so it's going to have an ending where uh, I end up somewhere else. But um, yeah, it's going to suck all the baddies back into the book. Shop smart. Shop S-smart. Um, but, like, I'm never going to do a pinhead book. You know, I can't, but, uh, and I'm only, there's only one Leatherface book, but that's not, I include them in there because they're slashers, you know? Yeah. Uh, right. Because, like, I had Chucky in there before I did the Chucky books. Somebody's like, why do you have Chucky in it if you don't read Chucky books? I'm like, because he's 80 slasher related. <laughs> that's right. Not... I, I have uh, something on this. Uh -huh. There, there really, there isn't a novelization of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But if you're, if you're in for a treat, I didn't say that right. If, if you want a treat, listen to the audiobook. God damn it, I cannot think of the name of it. It's, it's Gunnar Hansen that played Leatherface. He uh -huh. did an audiobook where he talks about his time on the set, and it is really interesting to read. Okay. I am going to narrate the uh, 2003 novelization, though, probably pretty Okay, soon. it's called Chainsaw Confidential. It's on Audible, and it's him talking about his experiences with the movie and making it. I mean, it sounds like hell when they were making it, but there are some funny moments in that book uh, as far as him coming into the character and uh, his interaction with the, the rest of the crew. I knew you'd yeah. appreciate the original Leatherface, though. Oh, yeah. Um, that's just, I had to go with that. Um, yeah, getting to see that uh, in theaters was so cool. You saw it in theaters? Um, they, um, I, I was talking earlier on the, the episode we did. They were doing a Tobey Hooper film festival. There, there, there's a special theater that can be rented out in um, downtown Denver. And they were, they were doing a Tobey Hooper festival. And one night they did Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2 back to back. They held a party before the movie. They had uh, they had barbecue. The hostess was dressed like the main woman from the movie. Um, and Leatherface comes out, and he comes out with a chainsaw, and he cuts the cake, so we all get pieces of it. And he drags her and ties her to a chair for the hostess, and he has to, like, give her the microphone, and she's trying to talk. And he's, he does, like, the scream and stuff, and he puts on the pretty mask with the suit. And they did one back-to-back -back with two, and, like... I loved seeing these on the big screen. It was fantastic. Um, it was a really fun night. It sounds like one of the Rocky Horror showings I've been to before. Uh, yeah. Those were a lot of fun. Uh, you go there, expect to have, like, toast on you and rice in your hair. Uh, the Rocky Horror showings are nuts, man. Um, I still haven't seen a film. I would love to do a drinking game to Rocky Horror Picture Show with you one day. I think that'd be fun. It'd be different. Um and it's, it's not that long. It wouldn't be that hard. So, yeah, I think that could be fun. You ought to see if there's any interest in that. Um, do you have any uh, projects, videos coming up you want to plug? Oh, I, um, I have an interview with Phil Demel coming up, uh, who's the ex-guitarist from Machine Ed, and he's also in uh, the Bay Area thrash metal band uh, Violence. So I'm, I'm going to be uploading that Monday. Um, I have an interview with uh, Elizabeth Cox, who was in Intruder. She was the final girl in Intruder, and that's uh, she almost beat Adam Marcus with uh, the length of the interview. It's okay. 55 minutes long. The one with Adam Marcus is an hour long, so uh, it's really interesting because she has like all sorts of notes and like the screenplay from back in the day. So it's really interesting to see that one. Uh, other than that, I don't really have anything. I uploaded a Motorhead uh, album ranking yesterday, so uh, that's a very controversial one. And I, there's already one dislike, which I usually don't get dislikes this quick, so I already know uh, that's going to piss some people off. But, you know, I, I don't get why, though, because would you rather have someone lie in their rankings and have the same ranking as most people, or... Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I right, piss exactly. people off with my Freddie and Jason rankings all the time, so... Right. You gotta be honest, man. It's kind of like... Like, okay, I have a curse, apparently, with these drinking games. Like, I've had such bad luck while we're filming them. And, you know, it's almost to the point, like, we're gonna disappoint people if nothing happens, but I'm not gonna fake something. Right. Uh, you know... 
Uh, speaking of which, uh, is that still supposed to drop, uh, I guess, later today or the same day as this? Well, yeah. Um, I'm more comfortable with saying tomorrow, but technically today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this is uh, recorded the day ahead of time. So, uh, yeah, and we'll be getting together sometime soon and recording yeah, the finale, we'll... which is going to be a blast. Um, Just so we can yeah. upload it two weeks after, uh, after tomorrow, you know. Check out Slasher Pepper's channel in the description. Uh, give him a subscri uh, subscribe to him. Let him know I uh, sent you. Uh, be sure to click the thumbs up on his latest video since he's Appreciate already got it, a thumbs down on it. <laughs> uh, some asshole doesn't like his uh, his list. <laughs> Shit, you know. We, we, we're all entitled to our opinions. Uh, so I guess they're entitled to their opinion of not liking your opinion. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be the big Jerry Springer reveal if I revealed it was me because you, you uh, trash-talked me in an earlier video, so I'm just like, I did it! <laughs> I'm the disliker. <laughs> That's what you get for beating me so many times in a drinking game. Oh, right. <laughs> a dislike. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, so... You know, you, uh, apparently YouTube sees that as, um, as interaction. So yeah. they don't see that as negative interaction. They see that as interaction. So it's still, it's still only good for me, right? For the yeah, analytics. it helps your analytics uh, <laughs> totally. So you could you could have a hundred down votes and one thumbs up, and it's the same as having it in reverse. So. <laughs> it's, the, it's the drama the fans are expecting. We have to fight, and then um, the meet, the moment we're done recording. Cool. Do you think that fight went well? Yeah, I mean, I think it went well. All right, like like virtually shake hands. We just like go to the next. <laughs> I can always tell when there's a book that people aren't really excited about, you know, because, like, I've been doing Final Destination 3, and it's getting, you know, decent views and likes, and then, but it usually takes a few days, and then I put out a new upload of Friday the 13th to uh, Tuesday night, or Wednesday night, and it already had, like, as many as the other one did within, like, six hours. Right. Um... So the, the thumbs up is a good it. thing to help you, help you, uh, <laughs> exactly. the, the thumbs up and thumbs down is a good way to help you, uh, know what's working, what's not working, but it's also a good tool for trolls and that's the shitty part. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, there's always another side of the coin. Um, but yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Roger. No, for I, 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 I want to mention one more thing. I remember when no, I, no, no. You're done. In, in no, upon ahead, <laughs> Stop recording. <laughs> no, I remember when I did my uh, unpopular horror opinions. That was oh. this. I, I don't. I don't remember what someone commented, but someone basically said, "If it wasn't you making a video, I would have disliked it and hated on it." And that was like, that was such an odd comment that it's. <laughs> it's, it's it's like everyone is entitled to their own opinion, right? But why He's would you? He's got them cute little squeezable cheeks, you know. They can't thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> but those are Miss Fontaine's cheeks. Nobody touch. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. They're not. Definitely not hers. Or his. It's. Awkward yet? Is it getting awkward yet? It's only getting awkward if you do this. <laughs> like the guy in part three of the Leprechaun. The whole movie, he's like this, Sean. <laughs> yeah, no, the whole movie. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. What were you saying, Sean? No, I got the, I got the eyelids painted onto his, like, clothes. Exactly. <laughs> and he sets right. fire to the box. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, was, it was nice meeting you. Yeah, for sure, man. You ought to come back too. on and, and chat with us one night when you uh, feel like staying up till 3 in the morning. Well, I can chat after the recording now, too, so. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel here on Patreon. It means a lot. It keeps the channel going, and it's really awesome of you, especially in the times we're going through. Be excellent to each other. Love you all. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Roger. Uh, give Fontaine my best, and we will see you next time.